If you're struggling to scale your wholesale operation and want to know how to analyze wholesale supplier lists, then today I'm gonna to walk you through the exact step-by-step -step process that we're using to analyze wholesale supplier sheets and how we use software tools within that process. Stay tuned. Right, if you know anything about me, I normally do online arbitrage. And as part of that, we've actually decided to go a little bit more into wholesale, looking for products that we want to buy deeper. Now, when we found these products, we are actually now opening up and giving supplier lists. So I wanted to build a measurable and effective process that my team can do to support us in analyzing wholesale supplier lists. So the aim of this video today is to walk you through step-by-step -step of how we're using softwares and virtual assistants to scale our Amazon business through the analysis of wholesale supplier lists. So let's jump into the three steps to the wholesale process and how we can actually scale the business. Now, if you think about wholesale process for a moment, there are generally three parts. Opening wholesale suppliers, and I usually do this myself, and there are many videos on YouTube about it, so I'm not going to cover it today. The second part is going to be analyzing the wholesale supplier price list. This is probably why you're watching this video. It takes the most amount of time, and we're going to focus on that today within this video. And the third part is dealing with suppliers. Now, this involves checking the prices or the deals, negotiating, buying, and even reordering. Now, I'm not going to explain that in this video today, but if you are interested, do drop a comment down below and perhaps maybe I'll make a video about it. Now, the main point about this is steps one and steps three are going to be straightforward. And it's step two. That is our topic for today. And it is a challenging and time consuming one. Now, once we've got a good method in step two, what we can do is train our team members to do this for us. And within my business, we use virtual assistants, which allows us to grow and support our business. Now, the second section I want to talk about is defining the goals and the measures of success. So let's begin with our main goal. What are we really trying to focus on? That's going to be profit actual profit generated. And we want to focus on that and work backwards to shape our process to define the key measurables. By monitoring these numbers, we can boost them, improve them, leading to improvements. And in that, we're going to improve the main goal, which is profitability. Now, there are going to be two sets of measurables or funnels, as I like to call them, that we're going to want to track. Because by tracking these numbers, it's going to really help us improve our business, make us more profit, and allow us to scale quicker. Now, I'm going to overlay on the screen as we go to help you understand what we're talking about. So funnel one is really going to be spending money going through to actual profit. Now, for me, this is going to be tracked weekly. And I do this within my business and the OA business, but overall, and we're going to track it as part of the overall performance of the business. Now, we're going to be tracking actual gross profit, and this can take a few weeks to come in. So this is what's called a lagging metric. I, it takes time to get the numbers that we're looking for. So funnel one is going to be tracked weekly, and it's going to start off with the end goal, which is going to be actual gross profit in dollars or pounds. We can do this with our PL software, but really we can break it down by even supplier, VA, using custom SKUs. Now, I'm not going to go into what custom SKUs are, but if you want to know more about custom SKUs, then check out the explainer video up here. But also, as well, we have a sheet called the USS that does this automatically for you. Now, the next step we're going to look at is not actual profit. We're going to look at estimated to actual growth profit percentage. This is how much of the estimated growth profit we thought we were going to achieve that we actually achieved. And to do this, we we can use those custom SKUs. So if we thought we were going to make maybe $10 profit per item when we sold it, and we actually only made $7.5, then we would have had a 75% estimated to actual gross profit percentage. This is really useful to know because it helps you understand what happens to the supplier's prices once they hit the market and actually how much profit you actually generate. Does it remain high or does it crash? And if it crashes, you probably want to get out and maybe not buy from that supplier again. That's going to be something really important. How well does the supplier make or hold their prices? Now, the third metric we're going to look at is estimated gross profit. We've found loads of deals, we've purchased them. How much profit do we think we're going to generate? And generally, I'll look at that on a weekly basis. And the final, the fourth metric on the funnel one is going to be how much did we spend? Obviously, the more I spend, the more I'm probably you're going to make. So you've got those nice numbers coming up, which allow you to focus on the key areas. Now, the second funnel that I talk about is going to be tracked on a daily or per supplier metric. This is a leading indicator. So this means the information comes in early and it can help us predict what's going to happen. Now, we report and track this on a daily basis or on a per supplier basis to give us an understanding of how profitable a supplier is and how effective our VAs are working, which can give us some really good information to, should we say, improve our 
processes get faster and make more money. And there are gonna be five metrics we look at. So metric number one is gonna be good deals. We just simply count the number of good deals we've got on per day. Number two, we're gonna look at the number of deals submitted. So this is like our VA submits deals to us, really good. Number three, we're gonna look at the ASINs check. So how many ASINs we've actually checked that day. Number four is gonna be total URLs from the supplier seen if we're checking it on a website to make sure their products match. And then finally, the fifth one we're gonna be looking at is a number of minutes worked in, to say, that period. So we can identify how fast we can do it. So generally, it's gonna be an eight hour day, it'll be 480 minutes. Now from this five numbers, we can actually get some other insights which can be created to help us really start seeing how good a supplier is. So we can start to see those numbers which are gonna really help us grow. And these kind of insights are gonna be as follows. So supplier links checked per day or per hour. This is gonna give us a really good measure of our VA's performance and really how long it takes to analyze a list. We're also gonna look at ASIN checks per day and per hour, which helps us understand VA performance metrics. Also, we're gonna look at number of supplier links to deals submitted. This is like how many good deals we're getting from that supplier and tells us if it's a good supplier or maybe a bad one, and if we should skip that supplier and move on to cut our losses. And then the final one we'll look at is the number of supplier links to good deals. Again, if we're checking the supplier links, we can see that. And again, it's another metric that gives us a good idea of how many supplier links we have to check before we actually get deals that we want to buy. So again, improving that conversion rate is gonna help us out. Now this is gonna help us build a funnel, which is gonna really take us checking the number of supplier links, checking the ASINs, submitting deals and getting good deals. And it's gonna give us some numbers which we want to improve by improving our filtering, our operations and our process, which we'll go through in a minute. Now, top tip for you, work on reporting these numbers every single day, especially in funnel two, and then look at refining the process. It's gonna be the work that you do within funnel number two, which is going to change the game. It's going to make you get faster. So report it every day, get your VAs to take a screenshot, share it onto a Slack channel and see what's going on. Now, the next bit I want to talk about is a step-by-step -step process on how to analyze wholesale supply lists. Now, before you start this, I want you to know you need to have a certain number of metrics defined. This is going to be things like your minimum ROI, the profit, the weight. You want to have ideally at least five key brands that you are going to be like, these are the brands that I really like to focus on on and you're going to be happy to purchase. Usually these brands are going to have no Amazon, for example, you're probably not going to get any IP complaints. And generally the brand is not going to be on the listing. And these are going to be your go-to brands to check when there are no barcodes or you want to go through and have a quick spot check on any supplier list. So let's go through the step-by-step -step process of actually how to analyze the wholesale supplier list. Now, top tip for you, one thing that we do is we create a new column for the buy price and actually add in any additional costs we've got like prep center, ship to Amazon fees. Sometimes the softwares aren't perfect. So we generally just add it in, get the software to do the analysis. And when we do the manual check, we'll revert back to the original buy price from the supplier. And that's because our tools have the costs in them. Step one, let's do the initial analysis. Now, if the supplier price list provides a barcode like UPC, for example, we're generally gonna use a tool called Scan Unlimited and apply our specific filters to the results. Now I'll explain what those filters are that we've actually created later on. But what we will do is after filtering, we're going to manually visit each supplier link and then she say the associated scan unlimited suggested ASIN to determine if it's a good deal or not. And that's based on our own standards, the criteria I talked about earlier. Now, if there is no barcode with the supplier link, we are going to prioritize those five key brands that I mentioned earlier, the ones that you want to go to. And we're going to manually review the supplier product list against matching products, i.e. find them to see if those five key brands have any good deals according to our criteria. Now, don't worry, I'm going to walk you through the manual redeal process in a moment, but I just want to talk you through what it looks like in high level. Now, the second step we're going to do is we're going to measure the deal quality. Now, we're going to assess the supplier sheet based upon the volume of favorable good deals that we find. Now, remember before we caught, should we say we had that metric that we discussed, number of supplier links to deals submitted. For instance, if I normally find that a typical supplier will have 100 supplier links I have to check to find one good deal, that's my standard that I always use. Now, it might be the case that when I'm looking at this supplier, I now find that I only need to check 60 links to get one good deal. This means it's a really good supplier and I probably want to stay. And if not, I might leave, for example, and find another product. Now, the second kind of step that I go to this is a detail check. If you have a software scan to start with, I maybe if they come back good, it's a good 
good number, i.e. I'm getting a very low number of supplier links to successful deals, then I'm gonna manually go back and re-examine those key brands for potential deals. Again, I'm gonna re-evaluate based on our metric and understand the number of supplier links the good deals submitted. And if the results of this remain promising, then I'll probably go back and review the entire supplier sheet manually. Note, being aware of the brands that you want to avoid will also improve this process because it's gonna filter out those brands with maybe Amazon, IP complaints, just again, making the process even more efficient. Now, if it's a bad result, you know, I'm getting 130 link clicks for one good deal, maybe 200, then I'm probably gonna skip the supplier of the sheet and move on to the next sheet. Now, I talked to you about the manual deal review process and I wanna talk through that now. So when we're discussing the manual deal review process, I'm gonna be analyzing three key things to start with. One, do the products match? Number two, I'm gonna be looking at reconfirming the keeper chart to ensure that the listing sales are at least my minimum number of units. That could be 10, 100, 200, depending on what you're looking for. But I'll have a quick look at that sales rank graph on the keeper chart. And then finally, number three, I'm gonna have a brief review of the keeper chart to ensure I've identified any of the realistic sell price of the buy box. Now, I'm not focusing on the current price right now. I'm looking at a realistic long-term price over the last three months to one year. And once I've determined this, I'm gonna put this back into my tool for the SaaS to get a real, much more accurate profit and ROI figure. Now, I could dedicate an entire video to the nuances of analysis. And in fact, I've already done one. So if you're interested in learning how to analyze a deal in just 20 seconds, check out this video up here that I've recorded about the step-by-step -step process and how we do that. Now, pro tip for you, focusing on improving the process right here in this tiny deal analysis section, i.e. turning it from 30 seconds down to 20 seconds, is actually gonna change the game for you. To so spend a lot of time improving this process, that's gonna help. Okay, so I just wanna say, are you enjoying this video? If so, give me a thumbs up. But hey, even better than that, why not hit the share button, share the video on your social media and tag us, tell us what you liked about it and also what you, other videos you want me to create, perhaps maybe Maybe it's wholesale scanning software, maybe it's something else. Let me know by sharing on social media and obviously you can help other people as well. Now I want to move on to wholesale scanning software tools and the filter settings that we are using. Now before I talk through the settings we use, note at the end of this video I'm going to recommend another video which is actually I've created before which walks you through the step-by-step -step process of using Scan Unlimited and the setup of it with lots of live screen shares. So do check that out at the end. Now for us within Scan Unlimited, whether it be text or barcode, the filters that we apply after doing a scan are as follows. Now, we'll generally have removing Amazon. We generally have needs more than three offers on the listing. We're going to look at velocity greater than 20 sales a month, and you can use whatever you want or even sales rank. We're going to look at least $2 profit after we've added in all our prep price and the cost, as you say, into the cost of goods. And that's before going into the sheet. We're looking for a min ROI of 30%, and then anything where like the weight's too high, so we're going to go about two and a half pounds we might you say trim that off. So that's a really important point. Now, before diving into the tools and their application, let me just address one likely question that you're asking. Why this video? Why am I making it? What's the catch for you guys? Simply put, Fast Track FBA, we specialize in providing high quality trained virtual assistants. Now, whilst finding a VA can be as simple as checking your DMs, finding a quality VA can actually be really tricky. Hence why with us, every VA that we place comes with a 12 week unlimited replacement. So if you're not satisfied, you've got any problems, we will replace that VA free of charge within the first initial 12 weeks. And what's even better, we'll reset the timer for another 12 weeks for your next VA. And you can keep doing this. This allows you to focus on scaling your business and not worrying how to learn how to hire virtual assistants. In addition to that, we equip you with all the management guides, one-to-one -one and group support, a dedicated VA owners community, and continuous updates based on our insights. And all of this is just a one-time payment. If you are interested and want to know more, check out the link down below. And for many, hiring a VA might seem premature. But throughout this video, our aim is to help you streamline your wholesale operations and the processes. And when you're ready, you can get one of our VAs and they're going to seamlessly integrate into your operations, saving you time, boosting profits. And if you want to know more, you can book a free call with my team on that VA link down below. Let's get back. Let's jump into some tools. You've got all the essentials to sourcing, but what about tracking? Well, that is a completely different ball game. Tracking is crucial because this is all about measuring and optimizing performance. And I'm here to guide you through with some of the tools that we've used to help simplify this task. Now, these tools are going to make it easy for you to manage, should we say, tracking the number of URLs, the number of ASINs that we touched upon earlier. The process, pretty straightforward. With the help of the tools, I'm going to talk 
you through. Now here's what you're gonna to need to do. Down below there's gonna be some links. You're gonna to need to download a Chrome extension, which I will actually add to the free download you can get down below. And each day you're gonna download your browsing history, what your VA is, and upload it into Google Sheet. It's just gonna give you the insights that you're gonna to need to know. Now the sheet is gonna tally the total number of unique URLs visited and the unique number of ASINs visited. And it's gonna give you those insights into those numbers within literally a second. Now I will say, do note the system is not flawless. You might end up logging unrelated URLs like those from Facebook, for example. So it might be a good idea to keep personal browsing to a minimum and use a separate Chrome profile. Now, while we're not aiming for perfect numbers, we are keen to understand, as you say, the general ratio, the total URLs, the Amazon URLs, and finally deals submitted. And again, I come back to the point, on an average day, you might analyze 100 deals and find one good deal. Now, if you find a supplier where per 100 deals analyzed, you're getting two or three good deals, this could be a stellar supplier. Now, the second tool I'm gonna to recommend for you is a time tracking tool. If you've got virtual assistants, you're gonna need a way to track your hours. Within my business, we use a tool called Team Logger. It it costs $1 per team member per month. And for an extra 50 cents, you can upgrade the screenshot frequency from every 30 minutes to every two minutes, which is gonna really help you out just having insights into what's working. Now, let's move on to how to implement this within your business. Now, I wanna go through a seven step implementation process that's gonna help bring this to life within your business. Number one, unified learning. Now, if you're using virtual assistants or you've got a team, make sure that everyone is aligned. This should involve maybe everyone watching this video. That's gonna be really simple. Number two, set up your reporting. Grab the Google Sheet from the download link below. Get that set up. Number three, familiarize yourself with the tools. Install the tools that I've talked about and spend a few days really familiarizing yourself. Get the data, start seeing the reporting. Ensure the data is coming in and it's accurate and it's logged correctly. Proper tracking is a prerequisite for making improvements. If you can't measure it, you can't manage it. Number four, tailor the process. Make sure all the processes align with your business specifics. Now, this might be involved in, should you say, defining the preferred brand, setting the profit margins, sales rank, the competition, the threshold, update the sheets accordingly. And again, the download will help you with that. Now, number five, the initial implementation. Whether or not it's you or a VA, run some tests, run some processes for a day and see what happens, review it, tweak it. It's gonna take a couple of days, even if a few weeks to refine this and get the measurements in place so that you can improve. Now, number six is gonna be celebrating milestones. Recognizing small wins, like finalizing the process, documenting or seeing initial results, boosts your team morale. Keeping everyone aligned and motivated is going to be so key. Number seven, have regular reviews. Now having weekly sit downs with your team, analyze the data, particularly from funnel one, how you're performing, and then funnel two, which is the daily basis updates. You can discuss and implement ways to make improvements, making your process faster and more efficient. Okay, so that's it. Now remember, I'm going to drop a link around here to that Scan Unlimited video. And then in addition to that, in the description down below, you're going to find a link to my next YouTube live. So if you've got any questions, you can just ask me for on there. And finally, don't forget, share this, tag us, let us know if you liked it. Stay safe.